So, we are officially on the third day of Haverford Strike, so October 31st. Both Haverford, Bryn Mawr, and Swarthmore, for the time that they did do the strike, have a timeline for the actual strike thing. They said what meetings they had, they list documents when applicable, uh, there's Zoom links when applicable, sometimes there's Zoom recordings, not all of them have, were recorded from what I could find. And so, this letter was listed for day three. I don't know if it was sent out, but it kind of just kind of summarizes where they are, some of the support things, and I thought I would read some of this to you, along with looking at the templates that the organizers created for students to send out to their faculty or faculty to send out to the administration or for faculty to send to other schools. And then we'll look into what the BICO mutual aid is. At least we'll look at some of the Instagram posts they have and kind of uh, see where they place themselves in all this because they're mentioned quite a lot and have been mentioned quite a lot so far. So let's start with this uh, letter that's under day three for the organizer's timeline. Dear Haverford community, we're starting day three of the Haverford strike and we've received so much support but also some questions and concerns. Through these updates we want to share what has happened so far and what we need to do collectively to continue the strike until we start seeing structural and institutional transformation at Haverford College. Before we start our update, we want to acknowledge President Raymond's recent email. President Raymond only responded because staff and faculty are nervous. They are trying to placate us with small concessions to stop our momentum. They are already feeling the disruption of our work, but this is only the beginning. We must keep going. This also isn't the first time they assume emotion on the administrator's end. It's weird. You work off emotion, so it's easy to try to uh, project that to others, and that's why they're reacting. Thank you for your patience and support as we continue to sort out logistics and organize. The uh, TLDR is how they, they state what the document is and donation. So, what does striking really mean? And don't cross the picket line. And we'll be reading that document after we go through this. A few students are still confused on how to strike. Before we get there, it is important to remind you the foundations and motivations of our strike. We want to reiterate that this is not a vacation. To put into context what, where this strike is coming from, it is in response to the administrator's continuous exploitation of black and brown students, specifically black women and non-binary community members. There's that tie to something bigger. There's like three, there's three rings to this. There's the email which was a more of initiation, which they admit is the initiation of something. And that it seems proof as this bigger thing, which is this uh, disparagement of these certain communities that they've named, which then goes into this bigger reign of America's disparagement towards a specific thing through these certain events that we've seen happen, at least if we're gonna uh, kind of zone in at a certain time from the summer for, of summer 2020 till now. Although Black Lives Matter I know has been very active, I think as early as 2012. Though I know I I saw them get wind more towards 2014, 2015. Although if you tie it back, they've been tied back to all these other movements for other stuff. But I've just seen the corporate name because Black Lives Matter does have a corporateness to it in the background. But from all these movements, probably early as 2012 is when I've seen the, well, not personally seen it, but like where it's been dated. I personally saw it 2014, 2015. To continue... On that note, BIPOC students are intentionally withholding their labor from an institution that continues to exploit their academic, intellectual, and emotional labor without having the adequate resources or competent administration in place to support their needs and demands. Although this has received much attention and support from non-BIPOC community members, the implementation of the strike has been inconsistent. It is imperative that when you strike, you refrain from all work, employment with the college, assignments, deadlines, extracurriculars, and correspondence with faculty that goes beyond communicating the goals of the strike and the importance of their commitment. We must get to you and the faculty members to be wholly committed to our strike so, together, we pressure administration to make swift institutional changes. This isn't about talking about our demands and trying to see what's happening and having a dialogue. No, it's pressuring from our framework. To the administration. The strike cannot succeed if we have a few students turning in work or going to class, which is why it is critical that you explain to faculty members why they should be committed to our strike and convince them not to penalize us when we do not go to class or turn in assignments. That sentence right there, though there's no direct coercion towards anyone, that in itself creates the environment that if you're going to class, if you're turning in assignments, 
there is something wrong with you. You're not on the right page of this history we are developing. You don't understand the emotions and pain we are going through. I'll continue this rant as we read the rest of it because there's a sentence at the end. The strike is, is supposed to disrupt normal routines because it is clear that Haverford is too comfortable exploiting BIPOC and isolating itself from the injustice and struggle from liberation just 20 minutes away. We understand that each person has a different reason for coming to this college. However, we have to remind both within and outside this college, there has been a global reckoning with social justice and we cannot put assignments and syllabi over black lives. Back to my tangent, they're now equating themselves this strike to being about these black lives, these black bodies. And if we want this thing, which we've now attributed to this huge moral consensus to go through, we can't, no one, not a single person can turn in assignments or that's their goal. Because if anyone's doing that, then there's no pressure on the administration to recognize our labor and recognize our movement, which makes anyone against the strike for legitimate moral reasons of what we're seeing now, which is just pressure to follow what we think is right on the wrong side of history. It allows no nuance of an individual or even small group because I'm, I'm, I'm not just going to say there's like two people or three people because we'll see two pe people do speak out against this and one is a group and there's two significant individuals that come up. However, this paragraph in and of itself sets an environment an actual environment of hostility that the strikers either will not admit or they go to this idea that we're not directly bullying anyone we're not giving direct action we're not telling people to go to others and tell them to do this or to coerce them we're not telling them to do it directly but we're going to say in every single paragraph that if you do this you're equating your own educational journey against black lives and black bodies how we perceive it though because as the b delightfully quoted in the sit-in from october 28th to 29th Li and not linda strong link i'm mixing up my administration bylander dean bylander was told that even if you're black your skin is black you can still be working against us you can still be complicit in the system ah. to continue with the document they uh, talk about the nest, which is not something that came from the strike. It actually uh, spawned before, which is like a communal uh, pantry for low-income students and BIPOC students. And that's um, talked about a lot within Haverford strike because it's like, oh, just go to the nest for food. Don't go to the dining hall for food. Then they talk about the dining center. And they make it clear that like dining center is not an act to cross the picket line. So if you have to go to the dining center because you can't... Um, you have certain dietarians or anything, you can go there. And this is harped on whenever the bowling comes up or whenever the talk of the dining hall comes up. They keep saying, it's not crossing the picket line. No one's blowing. You have to go to the diner hall. Just go eat. And it's kind of used as a protector for them not to address the point I just went off earlier with this environment of like with or against us. We're for this huge moral thing. And if you don't go by us, then you're, you're not for this big moral thing that has so many branches to how you can support it that... We're not going to recognize that, though, because it's not within our framework, and we're going to tie our framework and our belief to what we look like and tie that back to this big moral thing, and it's all just this interconnected thing that you cannot escape and you just have to accept. Reminds me of a certain type of uh, belief thing that can also fall into this loop that starts with the letter R. That is not a slur. It is an actual word to describe belief. They go off at the dining center. They mention the mutual aid. $80,000 raised from donations. $80,000. $80,000. This, the mutual aid has existed since early September of 2020. And they had some, they kept updated on their Instagram, like how, what, do, what donations came in and what they went out. And they promoted certain types of uh, GoFundMes for certain groups of people. Again, as I've said, I don't, Morally, I'm not going to stop someone from having a certain donation type system for a specific group. I just don't like how in all of these, when it talks about donating to mutual aid, you have to go into the mutual aid to then look and see what the, what the actual thing's for. It's not mutual aid for the community for BICO. It's mutual aid for the BIPOC community in BICO, specifically this certain section of Bi BIPOC people. Oh my god, this is why I was putting uh, special aided reading classes all throughout my public school education. <laughs> okay, 
We'll get to the mutual aid in a second. But eighty thousand dollars raised. Eighty thousand dollars. They mention other ones, which include uh, Philly reparations, which is LGBTQIA plus. We are a group based in Philadelphia that helps give reparations to Black LGBTQIA plus in Philadelphia. And then there's Mutual Aid Philly, um, Philadelphia, uh, a Philly fee dominant network, trans and two spirit and feminine indigenous autonomous collectively caring occupied Lenape land in West Philly. Um, Philadelphia Volunteer Space Alliance, protecting black and brown communities. The group was formed, this other group was formed by black women organizing during the summer 2020. Uh, they mentioned a new Instagram and they mentioned two halls that happen, two town halls that will happen which we will be able to look at one of them, which is the faculty town hall. This is the document that, I have to be careful hitting the table because I forget that this thing's placed on the table. But this is the document that's shared a lot within a lot of the um, uh, emails sent out and the saying to someone new, um, what does striking mean? And so they go into the specifics of this. Some of this is reiteration from the letter we just wrote, read, read, not wrote. So, but I still want to read some of it anyway. So what does striking mean for students? Don't go to class, don't turn in assignments, don't participate in asynchronous lectures, discussions, anything. If they're due today, trust the collective. If no one turns them in, even reluctant faculty members will be forced to comply. Email your professor and let them know of your plans, urging them to support the strike and make adjustments accordingly. Send them this document, which contains friendly tips on how to stand in solidarity. This includes Brigmar and Swarthmore classes. Email those professors to inform them of the strike. If you're a BMC student, don't attend your Haverford classes and bring up the strike in your classrooms at Brigmar or Strike in Solidarity. Don't go to work and if you're able, which, which goes to white, not low income, not reliant on Haverford jobs for subsidence, donate at least the amount of money you would have made today on the ground Philly organizations that are supporting black and brown queer slash trans communities. The mutual aid funds, uh, the Bico Mutual Aid and, um, and HD Strike Fund, have gained so much support these last couple of days, that which we appreciate. Which, this is why we'll give them. They get a lot of money, and so instead of like continuously asking for money, they ask to donate to other places, which I do find uh, commendable in a, in a principled sense. You can find the organizers of organizations on Instagram as they follow, and they list the same things. Don't go to the co-op for food, except grab and go sushi. Especially if you live in the apartments, in order to not over overwhelm the grill workers there. If you have an apartment, please cook. If you have the funds, please order out. And please try to use alternative meal sources, such as the Nest, Left Side, or Whitehead Campus Center, or community house meals. It is understandable if you don't have access to a kitchen and have limited options and still go to the D.C. We just don't want to overwhelm the D.C. workers. If possible, organize with your friends and get food from the apartments and or elsewhere. The Nest is still open and operating for any BIPOC FGL students that need to get food. Again, especially for those in the apartments. The door will be open beyond the normal hours for students to walk in and grab anything they need. If you must buy anything online and live in HCA, order directly to your apartment and to not overburden central services. Prioritizing does not, not prioritize not ordering anything online for the duration of the strike. Keep logging your hours in as normal as a workday, especially FGLI slash BIPOC students. Even though in the reply that Wendy sent out, the saying that we will compensate uh, about 20 hours of work for those students striking, there's no specific identity listed of who can offer those 20 hours. It's just, I find it weird what, that you'd have to specify, especially these students, because any student can be a worker at this school and be able to get that compensation of the 20 hours according to what we've read so far. To continue, don't go to your extracurriculars. This includes athletics at any level, including varsity athletes. Don't attend college-sponsored events, including but not limited to talks, discussions, panels, and lectures online and in person. If you're financially able, especially white and non-work student non-work study student on campus, distribute funds to Philly orgs listed above. For job supervisors, expect student workers to not be working their jobs beginning October 29th and until the administration meets the strike demands. Offer support for student workers and stand behind them as they partake in this. For faculty, 
Cancel class until further notice and send an email articulating your solidarity with strikers. If you're a tenured faculty member, support con contingent tenure track and visiting faculty and ensure they do not receive any retribution for striking. Send funds to support Philly Orgs listed above. Begin department organizing as a collective to protect tenure track and visiting professors within your department from retribution from administration. Adjust the syllabi and assignments accordingly so students maintain an appropriate workload for the duration of and after the strike. This includes providing extensions, canceling assignments, reduced readings, not making up missed class time, and what's left of the semester. Adjust metrics and expectations for participation, especially for BIPOC FGLI students who should not feel pressure to express themselves in academic discussion when handling mental, financial, and other academic burden. Again, this is a weird specification Though they have given the reasoning for it of saying, well, there's these things happening all around the United States and they're specified within these specific races and within these specific class groups. And thus, when someone is of that group and they see that happening, there, there can be an extra conflict that might not happen with another. However, other trauma is still happening in the world. The world's not the best place for happy joy feelings all the time. There's always something happening. And it's just, it feels very... It still feels weird in that sense why you would specify that group when there's other groups that maybe not vocally and won't express it are experiencing the same sort of, and I'll use the word, traumas, but are still turning in work. To continue, email the administration expressing your support for the strike and students and faculty of color. Don't attend college-sponsored events, including but not limited to talks, discussions, etc. Cancel your participation in and sponsorships of panels, lectures, and other discussions of that nature in solidarity with the strike. Food, up, food alternatives to the corp. And that's the end of that document. All right, this is one of the three templates. So this is the first one that is directed towards strike statement for students to send out to board managers. Hello, blank. My name is MNA. I am ready to share my support for the Haverford strike and to ask you to take action to meet the demands they set out in the statement to President Raymond. The strike and demands aren't just a response to the unacceptable letter that President Raymond sent out after the murder of Walter Wallace Jr., but also to institutional and structural racism and anti-blackness experienced by black, indigenous, and people of color, BIPOC students at Haverford College. It is time for Haverford College to truly support its BIPOC students and not continue to harm, to not continue to cause harm to them while they are trying to learn and succeed. The group of strike organizers sent you a letter on Monday to connect and share the frustrations and concern with how black and brown, or not capitalized, students are treated and the actions that Haverford College need to take. I hope you take the time to listen and hear them and respond in support of their efforts. As the board of managers, you need to take quick action to respond to student demands. This goes beyond just President Raymond. We are asking for your commitment to students as well. Sincerely, whatever you want to put. So for this document, we're not going to read completely through because it's kind of just a uh, little specs of things like, oh, if you're, this is what's happening now, this is what's happening then, because this, this specific template document was released November 3rd, so we're going a little in the future. Um, they do mention here, uh, there's this point where uh, the, the professor and the writer of How to Be an Anti-Racist was supposed to come to the college and, and then COVID happened, but then this whole strike happened and they wanted to get his attention being like, look what's happening at our college, can you support us and all this other stuff. And so that's what the, in the fourth area, there's an urgent matter, which is connecting Professor Imbrun Kendi, please do this as soon as possible. But they talk about cancellation. I don't want to scroll all the way down because there's a whole page where they list all the emails of the administration asking them to put pressure on them, put pressure on the faculty, keep applying pressure. So this is that template. This is a double template. It has one for professors and one for advisories or board people. Dear Professor, I hope this email finds you safe and sound. As you may have heard by now, students at Haverford are responding to in massive ways to both the murder of Walter Wallace Jr. and the unacceptable response put forth by college administrators. For context, last night, uh, October 28th to 9th, black students organized a campus-wide sit-in and march which challenged the administrator's response and demanded justice for Mr. Wallace. I mean, I don't really see anything in their demands as a direct for Mr. Wallace, but I guess you could put it behind his name if you really wanted to. 
The call was also for white, non-capitalized allies to finally get involved, use their privilege, and show up for privilege and show up for Black lives. Students marched until around 2 a.m. and then a campus-wide job such clubs as Class Strike was announced. I write, the I write today to tell you that, in solidarity with Black Lives Matter movements around the world and BIPOC students on our campus, we will not be attending class until the strike ends. Today, I can happily offer you these concrete actions. One, put the safety and well-being of Black students first at all times. Two, support strike efforts on campus and off. Reevaluate class right now to align with the anti-racist goals of this movement. Three, Pressure the college to commit concrete resources and immediate action towards Black students and Black lives, particularly in surrounding communities of Philly. Four, please see this document written by students on the reasons and demands, uh, reasons and demands for the strike. Five, please see this document written by students and how professors and administrators specifically can be involved. Six, check in with us. See how we're doing. Not doing your assignments. Check in. Hey, how you doing? Still not going to your class? Oh, thanks. And they probably are referencing organizers in that case, but that just asking that check in with us just sounds very odd. Thank you so much for caring about your students, especially in times like this. I know that as a professor, this must be hard to hear. Please do not feel that I don't value your class or my education. On the contrary, I want to improve the quality of this college and consider this to be important community supporting work. At the end of the day, I cannot sit in class without showing up for Black Lives. Feel free to reach out with any questions. Wishing you safety, health, and peace always. And there's one more template. Template for emailing advisors slash bosses. Hi, blank. Why is that much, Why is that one much more informal than when it comes to emailing your professors? I can tell you when emailing bosses, even if I'm close with them, I do not tread on ground of casual talk unless we're in person or during t over text. In light of the first tone-deaf email President Raymond and Dean Bylander sent out October 28th, Black and Brown, yay, capitalized, students of Haverford organized a protest to show solidarity with Black lives and call out the administration in their complicity with the perpetuation of white supremacy. Why not capitalized? This pro protest has so far taken various forms, a sit-in at Founders, a march through Ardmore, and now an academic and student worker strike. As of October 29th, 2020, at 12 a.m., students in support of this protest will not be showing up to their on-campus or virtual jobs. Virtual jobs. Myself included. This campus can only function due to the physical and emotional labor, labor of first-generation low-income students and students of color through our multiple jobs, extracurriculars, and classes. I stand in solidarity with the student-led protests. I stand in solidarity with Black Lives. And I demand that Haverford administration to do better. If you would like to know more, here is a link to the office statement, official statement. That's where they leave that one blank and don't so they don't put the hyperlink. Best wishes, blank. Do better is also one you'll hear a lot. Not enough. You could have done better. Or do better. Listen better. Be a better ally. Better, better, better. So as I briefly mentioned, um, by co-mutual aid, raised during the time of the strike, right in the first few days, over $80,000. $80,000. That's a lot. That can probably pay for my college tuition. This is the first post on September 1st of on the, the Instagram. Who we are. We are a group of BICO students who are inspired by mutual aid efforts all over the country. And we think that our community can benefit from mutual aid as well. We see the unmet needs of many students and we want to make take matters into our own hands. We acknowledge that mutual aid is not reparations, nor is it a charity. This is about a sense of collective care and responsibility for our fellow students. This group was created in response to an effort to redistribute wealth and ra with racial justice in mind, and this remains an important consideration on campus given the deep roots of white supremacy, not capitalized, that exists in the BICO. Isn't a form of giving just counted as charity? I could understand not calling yourself a charity for tax reasons, maybe? I don't know the whole realm of what it is to be a nonprofit and also something that donates a lot of your almost every income you have to people who need it. Because a charity can be a, a, a continuous donation. Like you donate to a chair, you donate like a few bucks to this charity once a month that uh, helps foster children. They go away from the call of charity and they do that a few times in here because they're like, it's not a one time thing. It's also not reparations. We're just a mutual aid for the community, a specific part of the community, which we will only explicitly state on very few occasions. This is just a post from them. Uh, this was a few days before the strike. So just kind of gives you, they, as 
as per their value, they, they want transparency, they give transparency. So they show updates since September 8th, we have raised this much, distributed this much, and the current fund total is blanket this much. And so, but this was October 25th. So this was a few days before the initiation of the strike. And then the strike happens. And this is, uh, this uh, graphic appears a lot on any kind of Instagram for the strike. It is actually very beautifully done. I do like the kind of never lift the pen uh, silhouetted of people. It's kind of like something you would see on a, a tote bag of someone in New York walking from a grocery from their house to a grocery store because you can't have plastic bags. And so they got to have that like boho uh, tote bag type thing. That's what I would say. I don't know if it would say just up the order. <laughs> Strike all shouts, extra creators in class until BIPOC demands are met. But that's a, it's a cool graphic just says like what this means disrupt the order includes blank this is was a few days after the strike where they talk about um the the issue with distributing money so it says although we currently have a large balance in our accounts over 70k we can only distribute up to 10k per week due to venmo restrictions because of this large requests may require multiple weeks to fill we will still try to fill urgent needs asap we will still prioritize the needs of fgli bipoc students and given both hc and bmc are compensating of the 24 hours of strike work BCMA will provide compensation for hours over 20 hours. We are working to help students secure winter break housing. Please DM us if you are living on campus or know someone living off campus to, and have a room to sublet for free and cheap and students in need. So here they do say uh, prioritize. They don't say it's only for. So I will, uh, it's hard for me to say apologize because my whole thing is that that's not specified in all of these documents. The prioritization of by co community for the community, but we have a high prioritization for this group, and the the way that the we vet the prioritization, like what comes above that. If someone like is in the hospital and they happen to be of European descent, can we consider them if they're from this community? And the only reason you would really need that specificity, that specification. It's because you're handling money. And when you handle money, you are then recognized as some sort of entity higher up. I don't want to say corporate because they're kind of against things that are of an institution. But there's a certain function you have to be in to stay legal. I understand you're against the institution. That probably means the government too. But they exist. They, they got some power. They can, they can stomp you out. I don't, I, don't want, I don't want these people to get stomped out. That's not why I'm, I'm showing their actions. I'm showing their actions so we can see what's going on in other parts of the world. In these past few years of just explosions of everything. This post is something that I source in my mind when I talk about the weird specification of how they give aid. Bico Mutual Aid is fulfilling requests for POC organizing work. Please estimate the amount you wish to be compensated. Don't sell yourself short. This is real and important labor. Feel free to estimate based on hours worked and your, comp your campus hourly wage or how you see fit. White folks, do not request compensation! Even if you contributed time and labor in some way to the strike, this is mandatory and overdue. The the nuance of understanding how important labor is and the compensation of it and how long this labor needs to be compensated and this one needs to be mandatory and overdue for. Doesn't look like there's much salvation in this. There's not an actual general goal of this ended collectiveness. Just a weird continuous oh, this is normal, we gotta take it apart, and then this becomes a new normal. But even though we erected this new normal, we gotta take it out again. And that normal, in this case, is the labor of certain people in certain groups. How do you equate that? How do you that? I don't know. I don't really need to know, but I still want to question it. This is after the strike. I have two posts after, just to kind of show where they're at. So, we are accepting new contribu um, contributions. BCMA has distributed over 70k to students in need, POC organizers on campus, and Philly mutual aid groups. We are currently low on funds. Please continue sending requests, funds to support and continue requests. And they show their Venmo. Mutual aid is continuous work and community care, not a one-time charitable donation. This winter break, support BCMA. Send money. Ask your family slash parents to contribute. Host a fundraiser with your sports team or other colleges, clubs, or organization. Host a personal fundraiser. Sell art, clothing, service. Share your own on social media. And I'm going to read the uh, description for this one. BCMA needs funds to support time-sensitive requests for the housing and food security of low-income and BIPOC students under-supported by the college over winter break. What do you mean under-supported by the college? Like, did they not work as many hours or did they work and get illegally underpaid? 
Since the strike ended, we have struggled to fundraise anywhere near the amount we did during the strike. While showing up for racial justice on campus when it, it is high profile is of course crucial, this must be continuous. And that means making sure marginalized students on campus have food and housing over winter break. Get creative, show up for your peers. We have continued to receive time-sensitive requests for essential resources and are increasingly unable to fill them all in the, their entirety. If you have already reached your own re re redistribution limits, share with friends, family, and campus communities and expand our reach. This doesn't end. It's continuous. I mean, I, I can't argue with the fact that a... And I'm saying charity is in something that gives to someone. I'm not saying charity is in, like undermining their definition of what they are. I mean, I get a little antsy because like, I believe that any sort of thing that collects and donates money and you're not officiated by a government agency, you could be in some deep monkey trouble. And I don't wish upon monkey trouble from the government on anyone because that's not fun. Not fun to deal with. Especially the whole times on phone calls and the really terrible music they give for those times. Don't wish that on anyone. If you boosted your charity donations or charitable donations that were given to you because of a strike and you really really amped that of course when the strike ends you're not going to get that much so if you really are if you want to be continuous you might want to branch out outside of um well they admit it in and of themselves they're they give with social justice in mind so of course it's a social justice thing they're going to latch onto that to help get funds but those things don't last forever supposedly i mean their, their say of the strike of being a continuous action. Like, after the strike, oh, we're just gonna make a coalition to make sure that the strike stuff gets in action and to make sure that continuous stuff goes in action so we don't have to do this again. <sighs> yeah, you don't want to do this again. All this nice attention and feeling of power. I forget who said it. And I apologize I forget who said it. Said that crit uh, critical race theory is a cheat code for social power. I kind of feel that here. Use the, the cheat code of this strike to get money for supposedly good reasons. I can't assume that they they do have a spreadsheet that you can access that shows who they donate to and shows how much money comes in. This is not a dis dissing on what they donate to or who they donate to. I get queasy when it comes to how they promote themselves and it seems a little disingenuous to their actual cause. However, it's just you use that like the strike used that cheat code of CRT to get social power, that he latched onto that, and then now that you're doodling down in funds, and you're struggling. I'm just not surprised that you're struggling. I don't wish that. Don't wish it. Uh-uh. Not my thing to wish bad things upon people, but it makes sense. It makes sense why it happened. The next one's gonna be a long one, which is gonna be the official FAQ that the organizers give to questions. Boy howdy, is it a read. Some of the questions they get were pretty spot on. And the way they maneuver around it 